So uh, today we're going to be doing the installation of this system which has uh, touchscreen control as well as steering wheel control, it's a CarPlay system. Um, the steps involved I'm going to go through and just show you the, the overview of how to do it. So first of all we include these release keys in the kit for releasing the original multimedia unit. So you just pop these So if we just have a look at the back of a multimedia unit. Now for this kit, at the back of a stereo, um, we're only really worried about the video connection. But as a start, I always recommend we'll disconnect the most loop. Um, so our system will involve taking the removing the touchscreen. So to do that there's a bolt behind this hazard light switch. So again what we're going to do is we're going to pop this out. Now I wouldn't recommend disconnecting this because you've got the passenger airbag light there um, which may trigger an airbag warning light if you do disconnect it, especially if the ignition's on. So I would just going to place this to one side. Again, you can... Okay, so I've got this screw out. So this is our CarPlay box. Just going to give you a quick overview of the connections one, which is your power connection. Okay, so this one just goes in to the power connection labelled on the CarPlay box itself, like that. Um, you've got a few wires coming off this. This is actually for reversing camera, so unless you're installing a reversing camera, you don't need to be confused with any of them at, at the current time. <clears throat> the other important connection to make on here, audio out. This is our audio connector, which will actually replace this one on the quad lock. So, I'll just show you what we're going to do. There's a little tab in here, in your quad lock connection. You just raise that up. Raise it up slightly. Pull it out. This actually connects to the factory AUX socket, so you won't be able to use that when this is installed but obviously you'll have the benefit of CarPlay and also a separate USB port from the box which you can plug in a flash drive to listen to music. So we're going to take this one again coming from the audio out on the CarPlay power loop, plug that in, that just clicks straight in. And we run this to here, audio out, just plugs in like so, that's done. So then with the rest of our power lead, what's going to happen? is that's going to go down, that plugs in here which is underneath the steering wheel so this this panel is just held on by, by clips so if you work from the bottom again, it's not very difficult to take this off just be carefully, go around unclip it piece by piece it's off now it's it is held in place here don't be too rough with it because you've got the obd connector there so i'm just going to leave this like this i don't, don't need to take this out we've just got to make one connection under the dash to here is the end of a power loom which connects to the carplay box we discussed earlier this gray connector to the second wiring loom here um, Again, if we just if we just put these together like so, again they're tabs so they can't go the wrong way around. Clicks in. Now we have these two connectors. Now there is um, these actually link to the instrument cluster connection, which is why we removed the dash panel. So if we go in a bit, I'll just show you where that is. The easy way to find this is if you look at this orange 
most wiring for the car's most bus, which comes down under the dashboard. If you trace that next to it, I'm just trying to show you the connection. So you see you've got that connection there where the most goes in. The one next to it, this black connection, which is tabbed on the side with the release, um, we're going to remove that and then we're going to plug in the brown connector into where that slot is. Okay, there's a small that clips in, make sure it's fully clipped in, and then we take this brown connector and that goes where the instrument cluster connector came out. So now we've got a power lead all connected down here under the steering column and um, we're going to route this power wiring through so we can actually make the final connections to our box. So what we do, if we reach up behind here, you'll feel that there is a small space behind. So again, making sure that when the instrument cluster, outside when the steering wheel surround is put back, So now we've got a power wiring right through here. Um, we can connect uh, the audio out. We the connection we made at the back of a quad lock earlier. So basically now we've got the power to our box and everything is connected to that. This, this connection is made here and then this is ready to go into the box. So I just want to talk about this microphone lead. So there's a microphone included in the kit. And what we've done is we've run it down the side. We've taken this panel off here. It just levers off with the trim tool. We've gone up the A-pillar. Just peel that back so you can see it. We've just gone up the seal there, up to the top. Again, lever of the trim tool. It's coming up there. We've levered this back. And again, just gone up the headlining and along. Um, this this is actually quite flexible so you can pull the cable out there. I'll just show you the overhead console. So we've gone into there and what we do, there's a small hole here um, but we've actually, this is our microphone, so I recommend just double wrapping the microphone barrel in double sided tape and then it will stay there and actually be in a factory microphone location. And we've got the microphone cable routed through here. Just going to plug this into the box like so. I'm going to go ahead here and make our video connections. So, um, first one is on the back of the original head unit. So, we've got our cable which is LVDS in, um, and that, that just plugs into the back of here. These connectors they can only connect one way really, so that just goes into the back of there and it will clip in. If you try and put the wrong one in, it won't be able to clip in because the cable alignment is different. So then we've got this which goes into LCD in there. So the, the section of the cabling between the original multimedia unit and our CarPlay box has been made. And then it's simply a matter of taking the connection from the box to the monitor output. So this one just fits on here. Just like so. Let me take the other end and we put it into the green connection which is marked LCD out. So those are our screen connections. Um, our microphone connection will be made. So now um, we just need to route the USB cable for the CarPlay. Um, that one is down here, it's marked CP USB. I'm going to route it down to this area here and um, just because it's quite convenient to put your phone there, there's quite a lot of space um, it's just convenient to route it there. Now this is the USB cable that comes with the kit. Um, you can use an extension on it, I recommend a good quality one with nice thick cable um, they're available at various places such as Amazon or alternatively you could route into the glove box but in this case I'm just going to keep it very simple. So that just 
clicks into there, like so. Let me just take the other end of this cable. Now, I'm going to mount this box. Just take the original multimedia unit out away from it. So, we're going to ultimately mount this box. And there's a big space down here behind the stereo. This box is quite. So if I just if we just go forward a bit, just just in down here. So this is this is the um, the space where the original stereo fits in. So we're just going to mount the CarPlay box right down in the in the back here. Um, first of all, I'm just going to run this USB. I'm going to run it out to just uh, the um, steering column surround, just so we can get to it later. So The only other thing to note is there is a second USB cable here. I'm not going to install this one, but this is just for if you want to play MP4s or anything from a USB stick. And this one plugs in there, marked USB. So you can run that. We're not going to put this in this car, but it's very easy. Same principle as the other cable. You plug this end into the CarPlay box. You run this USB socket to wherever you would like it. If you are choosing to fit our touchscreen overlay, which is completely optional with this kit, but um, this is the, show you both ends of the wiring loom, that's the wiring loom there. This uh, eight pin end just fits into the, the port labeled touch, so it really just clips in like so. So we've got all of our essential connections made, apart from the microphone, which I'm gonna do when it's a bit further in. So we're literally just dropping this box down behind the multimedia unit. Um, there's quite a lot of space in the back of here. Um, we've made all our necessary connections. I'm just going to make one final one, um, which is my microphone. I'll just plug that in like that. Um, I'll just show you what I've got exposed. So from the CarPlay box side, we've got... Um, this is the LVDS cable, which will plug into the back of a multimedia unit. And this is the cable for our touchscreen, if you're fitting it. I just think it's best to keep it handy so you can make the connection up the top. Um, we've got this one is now redundant because that's the AUX connector we removed from the quad lock. You see we've swapped these two green ones. Um, this is our most loop for our stereo and this is our uh, radio aerial connection. So it's those three. You might have an additional one if you've got DAB but this car isn't equipped with that. So what I'm going to do is carefully feed this in. <laughs> So I've got that the box tucked in fully behind here, if you can see. You see with the LVDS connectors are popping out of the back there. So it's right down there, and if you just carefully root all the wiring, you should be able to get it in. Um, as you can see, I've got the necessary wiring now for my stereo to go in. I've rooted my touchscreen wiring, if that's required, just down here, just back down um, under the steering column. So. The first one will be the LVDS out coming from the CarPlay box. Just clips in there. So again, that goes in. Should fully clip in. Loop, and that goes in. Just clip that in there, and then don't forget to put your radio aerial or your DAB aerial if you have it. This one's just got FM. So we've made all our connections. Um, obviously we haven't put all the trim back yet, but this is a good time when all the connections are made securely to just give the unit a test. Just put the ignition on, you don't need to start the engine. Controls down I for a couple of seconds. And then uh, this is our main interface. So this is a trim tool we've included in the kit to get your screen unit up. And what I recommend doing is just carefully sliding it up and levering just on these edges. You might need to do it a few times, it's quite stiff. It's easier if you sit in the passenger seat um, because the clips are quite strong. So yeah, if you just lever it up like that and you've undone that bolt again in there, it will come out. And then when this is out, you just take the screen out like this. You can see the clips on here that are holding it in. They might have fallen down, so just keep a hold of them. Again, put them somewhere safe. Both of ours came off. They're, they're quite strong clips, but you can see it's just held on at the front here, here and here. Now, when you've done that, if you just fold, fold the screen in like that. 
So these are the connections below the factory screen unit. Before we can fit the touchscreen overlay, we need to remove this and work on it from away from the car. So we've got the LVDS out and we've got this connector out. Um, we've taken, there's a small bar that, or clip that holds it onto this bar here, the, the connection. So we've got that out, that just levers out with the flathead screwdriver. Um, final job, is we've got these two little bits holding it on. Um, just pop those out like that. And just, you can leave them with a the flathead screwdriver or I guess you could use a trim tool if you wanted to. I just find it quite easy like, just to do it like that. Okay, so, there are. so now all your screen connections are disconnected. And there, this is ready to go to the bench. Is we take the screen, turn it round, and if you press it to undo it, make it pop out. There's two um, T15 Torx screws, one here. So that's set out. So once you've removed those, it's a case of kind of pivoting the screen down a bit and taking the trusty flathead screwdriver and if you just prise on here there's a little clip centering clip here it's coming out you can see our goal is to actually remove the casing from the screen so we can apply the overlay so you just take it up like that you just got to get the screen to a point where you can actually hold it and just release that, take that away and here you are, you've got your, your screen there. Okay, so once you've got the, the front panel off, um, the easiest way to apply the overlay is actually to lever off the back panel. You can use a trim tool to do this. remove this bit and you see your other two screws here which you can do and then you have your screen so basically to, re to remove the metal surround <clears throat> as I've shown you you want to um, just lever up around these small clips so there's a, there's a little white seal here which you need to remove just peel that down to free it off and then just lever up carefully around all the clips at the side. So the frame is off. Um, take a cloth, carefully give this a little... Then we've got our overlay. Now, first thing to note is you can tell the correct orientation of it by you, you really want your text there's a little model number here to be legible, so readable from, from the front. So if it looks reversed, like this, that, that would be incorrect. So you, you want it to be clearly legible. And it's worth noting that there's two protective covers on this screen, um, front and back. So if you remove them both, I'm just going to remove the back one now. And then we'll put that in position. So that's all ready to go, and our wire's going to be run down there, so I think I will take this one off. So we've got our front, front and rear cover off. You want to try and keep this um, central, and then we're going to reposition our cover. Clip it all back on where you can. So what we're going to do now is we're going to feed this back, take that screen top from there, feed this back into here. Let's make a screw this back. So don't need to worry about putting it on for you. And we've got it. So 
See, it's not really under any pressure when the touch screen moves. So we'll put our rear cover on again, just check they're all tight. That's all nice and tight, so we'll put that back on, front facing. Then you just put it back over the hinge there. Hold it around the metal edge of the screen when you clip that back on just to avoid any damage. So all the front is clipped on, and that's working perfectly as you can see. Our ribbon cable is coming through there, um, so that's ready to rig up. Let's take this back to the car and fit this in. So this is a touchscreen cable which goes directly to the CarPlay box I showed before. I've just rooted this up to below where the screen is because this is where we're going to make our connection. Um, this one connects to the smaller interface so that's where the actual ribbon cable goes from the screen itself. So what we do is we just take these two, connect them together. Okay, so that connection is made so we can kind of stow this in the dash. Um, and then we just got to make this connection to the ribbon cable, which I'll do in a moment. So I'll just reconnect, make these connections again. Got. So we just test that it's comfortable. So, plenty of space with that. So make the, we can make these two connections again. And then if we just rest that on there, take this one, pull this little thing out, see it comes out like that. Now the important thing here is the contact side, which is this side must go on towards the bottom of the PCB. So that just pops straight in. And when you feel that's in, you just press that tab and that's all done. So we can hide our cables away here. And we can pop this back. Hey Siri. Navigate to Exeter Airport. I found one option, Exeter International Airport.